of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they were in great fear. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you will have only to be still. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night. And the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land. And in the morning watched the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the host of the Egyptians, and discomforted the host of the Egyptians, clogging their chariot wheels, so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. And the sea returned to its wonted flow when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled into it, and the Lord routed the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. So if you're looking at that, there's the magnificent story of fear and faith. We'll come back to that. That's the heart of faith. When we're afraid, we can't do anything. We turn to the Lord. We cry out to the Lord. He saves us. And we believe. But within it, you'll notice, it's a rather naturalistic explanation of what happened for the crossing of the Red Sea. It's the east wind blowing, the tidal lake, and the, it's dry. The Israelites uh, can walk across it, and then the tide comes back. And as it's coming back, the Egyptians are moving into it, and they can't escape. They can't turn around, and they're drowned. Now let's, uh, for a moment, look at the priestly account. From Sukkoth, and encamped at Etham, on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud, to lead them along the way, and by night, in a pillar of fire, to give them light, that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day, and the pillar of fire by night, did not depart from before the people. And then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp. For Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, king of Egypt, and he pursued, pursued the people of Israel, and they went forth defiantly. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the people of Israel may go on dry land through the sea. And I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, so that they shall go after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, the chariots and his horsemen. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the waters were divided, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, 
upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not so much as one of them remained, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Isn't that a much more dramatic version? We've got a strong sense of God hardening the heart of Pharaoh. We've got a strong sense of God speaking of his glory so that they will know my glory. That's a very priestly concept. We come to God to give God glory. We adore the Lord. That strong sense of worship that's deep to the heart of the priestly school. And of course the dramatic scene of Moses stretching out his hand and the sea dividing. You couldn't get much more dramatic than that as all those who have seen the film The Ten Commandments would know. And of course the Egyptians driving into the sea and being overwhelmed again. Words that are sometimes used of the creation story too. A sense of chaos and uh, God bring order eventually over chaos. God brings order over the chaos of what's happened to the Egyptians. So it's a very, very different feel about it, the priestly school. So that's the text. That, and there's, of course there's Eve, and I haven't bothered to look at Eve, because the main two are the Yahwist and the priestly school. And now just a final thought about the text. The narrative there, that magnificent narrative, powerful narrative, is followed by the liturgical Exodus 15, which is a poem, which is, if you like, a psalm. A psalm is a poem that's meant to be sung. And don't we always do that at Mass? After we hear something wonderful that God has done, we sing a psalm. After our first reading, whatever it is, we sing a psalm. So it's very liturgical. We have Exodus 13, verse 17 on, through 14, what God does, and then the psalm is sung beautifully um, it's in chapter 15. So, this is the oldest psalm in the Old Testament, more than likely. It retells the story but in a song form. And it's full of praise and thanksgiving. And again, isn't that what happens? When we hear something that God has done, our hearts are filled with joy and thanksgiving and praise. And so we naturally turn to God in song. When we have that text at the Easter Vigil, we have Exodus 14, and we have, and it's obligatory, to have Exodus 15, as the response psalm. So dear friends, we come now to our third thing, third part of today. It's a word of exegesis. Now exegesis is a, a funny word, but we talk about exegeting a text. And exegesis is all about just going through and seeing what the text actually is saying. Looking very carefully at the text at the language of the text. So when we exegete it, to, and the theology of a text, we're looking more closely, verse by verse. We call that exegesis. And just a few things in that passage then, I just want to pick out. Firstly, the departure, Exodus 13, verses 17 to 22. It says, by the way of the Philistines, and that's the normal way, which is from, to go from Egypt to the Holy Land, is close to, uh, close to the Mediterranean. They went that way first, and that's where the, it's possible that the miracle happened, and then God diverted them and they were in the wilderness for 40 years. There's the cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Chances are that's the one cloud. That's the wonderful cloud that signifies the presence of God with them 
reassuring them, leading them, 